I believe that we need to give young people a chance. You know, I, when I was 16, I was given a chance. I had the opportunity to do an apprenticeship, and then I was given a chance to go to Basel School of Design, and you know, Weingart mentored me and, and helped me, and, and I spent four years at Basel School of Design, and then I was given a chance by the then manage, managing director of Monotype, René Cafante, to work at Mon Monotype, you know, here in the UK as well as in the US. Mm -hmm. So I was given chances as a young person, and I do believe now it is actually my civic duty to pay back you know, and invest into the future generations. The reality is that in 10 years' time, 15 years' time, I'm going to be retired. And the people I'm investing in now, they're going to pay my pension. You know, so I'm going to be nice to them. You know. but, but selfishness aside, you know, I do believe you know, we need to invest in our young people for the future of society, for the future of our industry, for the future of what we're doing. And we can do that by providing great training. You know. Now, internships is something that we've been doing for years and years and years, you know, and in the last few years we have become very structured about it. And the motive for providing internships is not entirely selfless, of course. You know. it's, it's a great way to spot talent. You know, and the number of people who have been interns at Doltemark are now actually employees of Doltemark. You know, most notably our creative director, Lucas Paltram. He joined us as an intern, I think, back in 2009. You know, very talented, <clears throat> very talented. We gave him a job. He's now our creative director, you know, overseeing the development teams, and, and he's doing a fabulous job with that. I say, and there's a couple others, you know, who are who are here who were uh, interns before. Other people have moved, you know, back to from wherever, wherever they came from. They work as graphic designers, and they use the internship simply um, to gain more experience in type and typography, you know, just to build on those foundations a little bit more, just to have that time for two months to, to just focus on one thing only, you know, in their own time and really deeply focus on that, not be distracted about, oh, I've got to learn this program, I've got to write a 10,000 word essay, but actually just there, you know, pencil, paintbrush, eventually the mouse, just draw character after character after character every single day. And that gives them then that foundation. And in fact, the intern training program doesn't differ at all from the training program we give our new recruits, other than it is a little bit less in-depth. You know, it's not so much focused on, uh, on the processes of how we're working here, but more the intern program is more focused on just giving the student the foundation. The practicality of our training program is such that we actually have a dedicated team for training. So when a new recruit starts at Dalton Mark, they're not even assigned to a team yet or anything. They are literally in training. And that's all they do. And we budget for that right from the start. So we know when the person starts on day one, they sign the contract for the next three months or so, they are not available. And only once the mentor, in this instance, as I mentioned before, Ron Carpenter, once he says that person is ready, then they will be assigned to a team. So see, that's being budgeted for. Uh, their time, whilst they're in training, their time is not being uh, used for production work at all, actually. That resource doesn't appear anywhere, and that resource doesn't appear anywhere on our uh, planning system at all. You know, only once they're part of the team, then the resource appears, and then they get integrated in projects. The investment, you know, as I mentioned earlier, the investment pays off because we are now seeing slowly but surely that people understand the processes and they understand that they have to work together and the training enables them to do so. You know. And by working together, they work more, people work more efficiently. You know, they talk to each other, they have certain processes, and everyone designs in, in a certain way, not creatively. It's, it's obviously everyone has their own flair how they express a design, but the mechanics of the design are the same for anyone. So that means if someone is sick for any length of time, someone else can pick up that part of the project and complete it, complete it because they know what the person previous to them has done and they can just pick it up and finish it off.
because everyone works in the same way. The industry is changing so much and at and, and, and an incredible fast pace. You know, this is not only true for the type design industry, I mean, graphic design is changing. The digital design industry is, I mean, every day is changing. Every day you have to adapt. Fortunately, with fonts, things go a little bit slower you know, uh, than, than in, in other parts of the design industry. However, we have to also kind of like keep pace with the change. We have to keep ourselves informed of what is going on in, in, in the industry. I mean, the biggest thing, for example, now is responsive type. Not only responsive typography, but responsive type. And that is happening now. Prototypes are already out there. You know, there was just recently, I think a few days ago, there was a website you know, that, that basically shows proof of concept. And that's happening, I would suggest, in the next 12 to 18 months responsive type is a reality as a technology, not necessarily from a design point of view, but as a technology, it's going to happen. It's there. You know, that's one thing you know, we have to keep up with. But I think for us at Dalton Mark, the way we keep up with the industry changes is by talking to our customers, understanding what their needs are, understanding what their requirements are and our customers obviously are the design agencies the digital agencies but also the end client you know if the end client tells me you know what i actually don't even know what open type features are then we have to question ourselves is there a need for us to do that you know yes as typographers you know we'd say yeah yeah we want we want small caps we want non-lining figures and all that sort of stuff but there is not necessarily a need to do that, so we might be much better off investing the resources in developing other technologies, other ways of designing, and new ideas, innovation. I spend a lot of time on the outside of the business, you know, talking to clients, talking to agencies, being at conferences, trying to get as much information as I possibly can and bring it back into the business. That will then filter back into what we call sharing sessions. For example, once a month we have a non-project Thursday where all afternoon we just share information, we share uh, experiences you know, and we learn you know, and, and, and have exchange of information. And that is a way of bringing the outside world back into the business. But everyone else is as involved in that you know, as I am. Uh, some people may have done some research in technology, they will bring it back into the business and share it with their colleagues. So, so this is how we're keeping abreast, or how the development teams keep abreast you know, of the changes in technology.